Hi, I'm Gavin, and these are the Coffee Conspiracies. This is the second episode of my visit to Merthyr Tydfil, situated in the foothills of the magnificent Brecon Beacons National Park. Wales was once the centre of the world's iron and steel industries, and Merthyr Tydfil its burning core. At its peak in the mid-19th century, Merthyr had the most productive ironworks in the world and was the most populous district in the country. Since then, Merthyr Tydfil has sought a way back to prosperity and opportunity. The path it has chosen is both in high-tech manufacturing and, more importantly, as a regional retail centre. A host of new retail investment is coming to fruition, including a £40 million investment from Trago Mills, a large-scale discount retailer. Along with this will be improvements to infrastructure and transport. This is the overview for the Merthyr Tidfil Local Authority, and you can see that employment lags the national average by about 7% and commercial vacancies are about 4% more than the national average. Salaries are lower than average, but business efficiency is a touch higher than average, and typical profit margins are astonishingly high. Merthyr Tidfil's High Street is lovely, pedestrianised and naturally leads you through to the next shopping centre and then to the bus station. The shopping centres themselves are well integrated into the streets. Instead of these being visible barriers between different types of commercial area, it feels seamless. As a bit of urban planning, it's subtle and clever, and the advantage to business along that catchment zone is obvious with busy streets. There can be few towns anywhere in the UK where you can stand in the high street and see the Brecon beacons leaning over you demanding your attention. I'm more of an ocean kayaker than a mountain biker, but I do cycle and I felt myself itching to get out into the mountains and go see what mysteries they hold. A caveat. I visited adventure tourism centres all over the world. In general, there are small towns close to some natural wilderness area where people gather on their way in or out. All these places have a sort of vibey buzz filled with people wearing clothes in all the wrong colours. I visited Merthyr the day before the Easter long weekend, and it didn't feel like a place where that sort of tourist gathers. I did see a few lycra-clad dudes heading up the hill on their way for an afternoon cycling, but this still feels relatively undeveloped. Don't let that hold you back, but don't think you're going to arrive in a fully developed trail biking haven filled with burly blokes offering lessons on how to avoid razor burned on their inner thighs either. Now onto the reason for this episode. Retail space. Retail-based businesses make up over a quarter of the Merthyr economy, and there are a very high level of vacancies. Efficiency and profit margins are, however, about average. The problem for those retailers is that those vacancies are also clustered, and as you can see on the map, most are in the centre of town. One such area is the lower end of the high street, and the reason is obvious. There is no particular reason to walk in that direction. There is nothing down there, and the sheer number of vacancies is somewhat intimidating. That is set to change early in the new year, when the existing bus station is relocated to the bottom of the high street. As foot traffic shifts and the volume increases owing to the new Trago Mills retail centre, which will also be served by transport leaving from this bus station, these properties will become new opportunities. There aren't really any independent cafes here. But the meanwhile project from the local authority is bringing in a number of new foodie places, from Delhi of the Valley to Joel's Restaurant. I also love the awesome pizzas at Woodfired. Their coffee isn't exceptional, but it's pleasant enough. For this episode, I chose a site near the middle of the city centre, 7 Victoria Street, near the existing bus station. Hopefully you didn't blink there as I panned past it. Let me try that again. It's currently a butcher, and the street itself is vibey, with your more traditional coffee shops and fresh produce stores. The site itself is a double story, and it lends itself to coffee and something. My recommendation is, is the always successful combo of coffee and bicycles. You can extend your retail into the upstairs area and turn it into a bit of a showroom. It's a really great location, on the edge of the shopping centre and with easy access. You're looking at about £12,500 per annum for 70 square metres, and a staff requirement of about four people. The rates assessment is about £2,600, but as I suggested in the last episode, do contact the Murta Enterprise Development team to help with any lease and rates negotiations. You may find that these costs can be massively reduced for your first few years. This is the listing on Zoopla, and as always, links and references will be below in the video commentary. It's always a bit tricky recommending a site knowing that traffic flows will shortly be disrupted and changed. A major reason for the businesses of this particular location is the existing bus station. When that station moves, many of the people will too. That said, a coffee-bike shop combo as a destination has the potential to develop a community of its own.
You too could soon be hosting red cheek folks checking out each other's spandex. If you're unsure, but the promise of building a lifestyle business around coffee and weekend wild bike rides in the Brecon Beacons inspires you, I recommend taking your bikes and spending a few days in the area, as well as getting in touch with the enterprise development team and seeing how they may be able to help you with your dream. In the next episode, I'll be discussing opportunities for industry in Merthyr. Now, let's go get some coffee.